Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to All the Mods 6. Uh, so since the last episode, um, it hasn't been a lot of time because of course I came back in at the last, at the back end of last episode and uh, kind of updated you guys. So it hasn't been a long time. I was actually getting ready uh, to start this recording because it's time that we get some new um, tools and stuff. Um, so that's what I'd like to work on today. And so we're going to just go ahead and dive right into it. And the very first thing that we're going to do, first and foremost, is let's get ourselves let's get a stack of these, and we're going to get ourselves a handful of patterns, and then uh, the Tinker Station, I want this, and I want the Part Builder. So there's that. So the way that it works now is we put the, the patterns into here and we can choose you know, what we want to make here. And I think we are going to be making ourselves, uh, for right now, our only options are swords, hand axes, commas, maddox, pickaxes, and daggers. Um, I think we're going to go with just a sword, or do we just want to skip all of this? We could just skip all of this and just go straight for bigger and better things, I suppose. Because um, we could go straight for the anvils, um, although we are going to have to get into making alloys before we can do that. So we'll just go straight for the smeltery, I think. And since we're going to be building the smeltery, we may as well make a foundry as well uh, for processing our ores because it's going to give us a little over two ingots uh, per ore. We get some byproducts and stuff. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a bit of clay. Well, that's a lot of clay. Uh, <laughs> oh, clay is so free right now. And we're going to take that, that, that. That's going to give us some grout. And we're going to get this smelting up real quick. Uh, making us some seared bricks and we're not going to be going for a massive smeltery uh, we're just going to go for a basic one now one thing to note if you don't care about balance um, I do just want to point this out if you really don't care about balance and you want the strongest possible thing ASAP um, as long as you have access to the nether it is very very reasonable uh, that you could go straight for the vibranium ore because you can find this in the Warp Forest Crimson Forest. It's not going to be super common, but you could definitely go for that. Uh, and you could make weapons with like 200 damage straight out the gate that are like near unbreakable, as you can see. Just super OP weapons. Uh, you could go straight for these. Uh, if you choose to do so, to melt it, you are going to have to get soul lava. We're going to get into this later, but I don't want to go for this straight out the gate because... A, it would be kind of grindy, and B, it would be way too powerful uh, to go for this. But you would have to get basically melt down blazes and melt down some soul sand. But with Apotheosis, of course, you can silk touch a blaze spawner and just bring it over. So if you want some really OP weapons, that is an option that you can get right out the gate, pretty much. Uh, but we're not going to be doing that. We're gonna we're gonna pace ourselves a little bit more. Um, but okay, so we are going to be getting ourselves. A seared brick smeltery and we're going to get a casting basin and a casting table because we're gonna need that also uh, so what we're going to need is going to be a seared melter that'll be fine I think that there's a cheaper one I could have made for the glass and we're gonna get a seared heater okay I'm gonna need a little bit more seared bricks seared heater there we go and we're going to want a faucet or we might actually we can do without that to be honest because instead we're just gonna make a fluid pipe so let's put down that let's put down that I mean we could use lava for this as well but I think we'll just go with uh, solid fuel for this part because uh, we should be able to move through this pretty quick I think um, and then let's take and to get our scorched Stuff. Basically, we're going to have to smelt down magma blocks. Uh, so we can just throw those in. Let's get ourselves some. And then we're going to need something combustible. Let me pop down and get some coal because I think I'm actually out. I know I've got some coal over in the the new building and in my current furnaces, but I don't want to use that. So this may be enough. Bear in mind, you can still go with lava, put a tank under there. Um, but I think this will just be easier for us at the moment. So we're going to throw that in start melting these down uh, burn time should be pretty good on this and then let's take and put down this 
Uh, and let me get a couple hoppers as well. And of course I picked the worst possible spot to do this because there's no ground under that. Um, and let's put that on there and let's start feeding gravel into this and take our fluid pipe, run that down, and then just start pumping out that. And that's going to send it into here and it's going to turn that gravel then into uh, some scorched bricks for us. These the scorched stone. And then let's go ahead and get ourselves a chest. Put that in there and we're going to put an item pipe in and start drawing the items out of that. And we'll dump in some of that magma so that can auto fade it. Okay, and now we're also going to need to get a cast because in order to make the scorched bricks, these right here, we're going to have to pump that scorched stone out, which basically what we're going to have to do is this stone that we're making, we're going to have to turn around and remelt that down uh, to get the scorched stone, but we're going to have to make an ingot gold cast. So one ingot worth of gold dumped into here. And let's go ahead and grab 24 of the scorched stone because uh, we're going to trade it in for, I think, see that's smelted. Uh, let's go ahead and go with nine. I think we're going to go with a three by three to start. Um, and then we'll change that out. So we'll get that going. And then to get the bricks, it's basically just, uh, let me grab one more of these. Basically just crafting these down like that. So we're going to go ahead and get those. Uh, and as far as setting this up, we're going to come over to here where we had our setup last episode. Uh, and this is where we're actually going to be setting up our, uh, kind of our smeltery area and everything. So we're going to go right in here. And we probably will make this a little bit bigger and kind of change up the layout and stuff for this. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to put it in like so. Uh, let's go ahead and break up this. Fix that where those item pipes used to run. Okay, and this is now done. So I'm going to pull all this out. And we're going to remove that and remove that for the time being. Let's grab all of that. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's put down our seared casting table. We're going to put down a iron ingot there. And we're going to put down a gold ingot. And just get that melted up. Because um, that's going to get us our cast. All this pretty much works the same way that it used to, as you can tell. Uh, so there's our cast that makes ingots. And now at this point what we can do is we can dump in that scorched stone. And whenever it melts up. Uh, it's going to give us 576 millibuckets of scorched stone, and I think it's, uh, yeah, it's like 4 to 1 for that. So so let's just go ahead, dump that into there, and let that start running, making us those scorched bricks. Okay, and then back over to here, let's grab this, and we're going to put this down as the floor here. Uh, but we almost have everything for the foundry, and... We pretty much have everything for the smeltery now. Uh, let's go ahead, well, except for the controller. We're going to get that. Let me see. The smeltery controller is copper. Yeah. And the foundry is obsidian. Okay. That's easy enough. And I actually don't know that I mined any copper, but I know where some's out. Um, and it was just four ingots. Yeah. So that'll be easy enough. We're going to go ahead and grab that. There's five. Let me go ahead and get a little bit more because we're going to be making uh, probably some bronze today. Ooh, lead. We're going to take that also. But let me grab just a little bit of copper while I'm down here. Okay, that should be sufficient. Now let's go ahead. Let's get our... Uh, that's just going to be scorched bricks. So... Yeah, let me get that. And then for the smelter controller, the seared heater... There's that. Okay, and I think, yeah, this is just about done running. And in both cases, it is the casting basin that we're going to want. So we'll just put that there. Uh, let's put in the seared heater. And let's go ahead and throw in our copper. We're going to get that running. Um, and that way we can get the controller for the smeltery. And then we'll get the controller for the foundry. Um, and then let's go ahead and do the block of obsidian over the scorched bricks. 
Oh, actually, you know what? That is gonna need a higher heat source to melt though, isn't it? I can do it with lava. Okay, yeah. Well, we'll just, we'll do that through the smeltery then. That's fine. That will be perfectly fine for us. So we'll set up the smeltery first and then we'll set up the foundry. All right, so if we've got the smeltery sitting there, let me just cut this away. Bah. And then we'll have the smeltery setting over here. And we'll go with the 3x3. May keep the 3x3 over here, to be honest. Uh, and then... Make something a little bit bigger later on for some of the other setups. I actually may not have enough steel bricks for this. Well, actually, I could make this work at the moment. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll make this work for just a minute. So, uh, as far as our tank goes, we're just going to go with uh, the seared ingot tank. I like the look of that one. And then we'll have the smeltery controller in right there. And we are going to need to get ourselves a uh, the seared drain right here. Uh, we're going to need some copper for that. That's fine. I got some extra. And let me get this little bit of extra grout cooking up. Because I just need just a little bit of grout. Like, I think one piece. Right? Seal drain. Yeah. And the difference kind of here is the smeltery controller. We're going to be using this for our alloying and a lot of our general tinkers work. Uh, the foundry we're going to start using today for ore doubling. Because we can get byproducts, which is also really handy. Um, and the foundry is not going to make alloys for us. So this thing's going to be super useful. Um... You know, as long as we keep it stocked with lava. That's the big thing, uh, really. So let's go ahead, pop in right there. And we are going to have to go get some fuel. Let me uh, let me just take this tank down. And we'll just pop down to our mine area here. Uh, and use this. Of course, this isn't going to store a lot of lava. But it'll be enough for us to kind of get started. And we'll go ahead and just put this in. There we go. And at this point, um, I guess to make our foundry controller, we're just going to dump in that obsidian and get that running. Um, and as far as pumping the stuff out, I'm just going to put the casting basin in right there. I think this will connect. And then we're going to say, pull that out. Um, and then to get more of the seared bricks, molten clay and stone bricks do we want to do that method or do do we just want to do grout i think i just want to do grout <laughs> to be honest and then i'm gonna set up our melter uh, just right over here uh, let me turn that that's gonna bug me uh, right in here so that way it's here and we'll leave it there all right there we go there was our foundry controller and let's go ahead. Ooh, is that all the uh, scorch bricks that I made? I think it is. I guess I'll probably move our tinker tables over. That would be a good idea. We'll put that in. I know. You found something you didn't like. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and put in our casting table right here and then to get our obsidian panes these are 250 millibuckets each and then we are also going to want a foundry tank uh, I think we're gonna go with the scorched fuel tank for this and we are going to fill this thing up with some lava so let's pop back down so I think for our liquid storage we are going to go Let's see, I guess back, back side. Or I can go left, let's go left side actually. Because I think we're, or I'm sorry, right side. And I really need to do the same over here once we build this up. Uh, once that grout's done. Because I think we're going to have lava input on this side for both of them. So let's go ahead and get our foundry drain. Our scorch drain. Let's go ahead and get that. And this is going to go over on this side right there and then we're just going to fill in these last few slots just four we're just going to fill that in with some more scorch bricks 
Oh yeah, and I forgot to fill these down here. So, uh, just kind of going through and getting these filled back in. Uh, let me put blocks there. And then I've got to fill these edges here. This one requires the edges to be filled. This one, of course, doesn't. Uh, so I'm going to need eight. That's perfect. We have just enough. It actually wasn't intended, but it kind of worked out for us. Okay. So there we go. And this is now active. That's perfect. Now I'm going to want some more uh, scorch bricks to kind of build this up. But for now, this will be good for us. So now what we're going to do, let's get a... Let's actually just get a couple chests at this point. Um, and really, I want another... I do want another scorch drain, but... And really, I guess I should have made a seared duct. I don't have cobalt yet, though. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I've got... Uh, got a few bricks here we can kind of build this up a little bit let me go ahead and get this over here we're gonna go ahead and build this one up just a little bit and I really I'm gonna want cobalt for what I want for the foundry I think um, so we're gonna hold off on that for just a moment here and for this I think for right now I think I'd rather have a seared faucet um, because our smeltery, most of what we're going to be making with the smeltery, it's not going to be needed to be automated because we're going to be using, doing alloys and stuff like that. Uh, so let's put that in and then we'll put in, uh, let's go ahead and just make another one of these. There we go. And we'll put it in here. I think I'm going to end up building these back a little bit. So that, that, okay. And I actually need more magma. That's fine. We'll come back to this because really what I need right this second is this. Anyways, our first uh, anvil, we're going to make this out of Tinker's Bronze. So let's go ahead and just throw in uh, nine blocks of glass and then all the copper. We're going to need a little bit more copper though. And basically we're just going to need three blocks of that. And then I think uh, for the anvil, it's going to be just seared. Okay. And remember each of these in the smelter is going to be making two ingots. We've got two blocks of our bronze, so let's go ahead, let's set that to the bottom, and let's pump that out. And then we're just going to make an anvil out of that. There we go. Advanced tool making. I may end up moving that altar. I don't think I want it this close to the smeltery, now that I think about it. But anyways, we're going to put in, get out of here, I'm not ready for you just yet. I'm going to get into you soon, but not just yet. Uh, let's go ahead and put in our part builder our tinker station and our anvil I may end up moving that more like over there and let's throw these back in there and if we take a look now you can see that we can make a lot more stuff we can make uh, uh, there's the cleaver I definitely want one of those the broad axe the excavator the scythe sledgehammer and the vein miner and the first thing that we're going to make is going to be a weapon I do believe um, and to do this what we're going to do is let's get uh, first and foremost let's get a broad let me get some cobble real quick let's go ahead and make the cast that we're going to need um, the weapon that we're going to be going with is going to be a cleaver uh, so let's put that in there grab that we're also going to need tool handle and we are going to need the large plate as well uh, let's go ahead and pull this out for right now I need to make a cast chest um, and then let's get ourselves three ingots of gold smelted up. And to get our cast chest, and it's going to take a blank gold cast, so let's do that also. There's that. Pour out another one. There's that. Uh, let's do the stone handle. And then we can go ahead and get our cast chest. Just put that in right there. And then let's get the sword blade okay now for making this we are going to need two of the tool handles and what I'm thinking we're gonna go with is rose gold by the way if you need um, any help figuring out what modifiers and things you want to go with uh, these books right here well not tinkers gadgetry I don't think I think it's just these it's whatever goes into this right so those four books um, or this one book is what you need uh, JEI though has a lot of uh, useful help here too because 
you can go through and see all the different modifiers because they've changed a lot as far as uh, how the modifiers are installed and stuff um, or you know what gives specific modifiers so but anyways I don't really need those books right now we are going to go with rose gold uh, and to make this uh, we can do it in here and it's gonna be one gold to three copper for four ingots oh wait I made just the tool handle I need the tough handle I'm sorry let me get one more smelted up here um, and to get the tough handle it is three ingots for each tough handle uh, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go with like two and six and that's gonna give us plenty of our rose gold uh, to make our two tough handles and what rose gold does it does have a lower durability um, we are going to lose some durability with this but what it does is each piece that you put on adds one additional modifier slot yeah that's the tough handle um, adds one additional modifier slot uh, which will be beneficial to us because by default you only start with like two modifier slots and I'd like to have a couple more we can add some free ones and we're going to add a few today uh, but I'd like to get a couple more for our use so there is two of those for the uh, let's do the blade neck I'm still on the fence about the large plate I'm debating between another batch of rose gold uh, or going with like cobalt to increase speed um, we'd get more durability out of the cobalt as well but for our blade what I would like to do is I'd like to go with um, like I said, you can go for the really OP stuff. Basically any of these three ores, if you want to go to the ocean, you want to go to the nether, you want to go to the end, any of these three ores that you mine result in some really OP stuff as far as damage and stuff uh, with some really powerful, really powerful modifiers. Uh, we're going to get into that stuff later, but for now, I think we're going to go with mystical agriculture. And I think I might be able to pull off Tyrdium. Okay, I was able to make six tyrdium, uh, but I think per ingot it's two. Yeah, so I'm gonna need a lot more inferium. I tell you what, though, it's gonna take me a little bit of mining, but I actually think I can pull this off uh, fairly reasonably. So I'm going to do that. I should be able to use the seared casting table. Who I don't know, maybe. Uh, we got five ingots of molten nickel. And two blocks, seven ingots of molten iron. That's awesome. Uh, let's see about actually just pumping this out into the basin. But I'm not sure if you can use a seared basin. Oh, you can use it. Okay. So you can use a seared basin with a foundry. You don't have to have the scorched basin. I wasn't for sure about that. Okay, I'm gonna break that off because I don't have a block's worth. We're gonna be filtering this uh, here in just a little bit, but and we can get our tyrium ingots. We got three of those at the moment, and we're gonna go ahead and just throw this in right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull pour out the extra rose gold. We're actually gonna use this here shortly, though. So we got two ingots of that, three ingots of the molten tyrium. Okay, now I'm gonna go do a little bit of mining. And I guess really we could go ahead and make our pick. Um, I mined a little bit, not a whole lot. So we've got four ingots now. But yeah, we'll go ahead and make our pick first. Um, and for our pick, uh, I am going to need... Let me get some more gold smelting up. That way we can go ahead and get fortune and just make our lives a little bit easier. Can I use a faucet for this? Yes, I can. Perfect. Like a seared faucet. We're going to get some more of these scorched bricks in a moment, but... I don't mind. As it stands right now, this thing can hold 600 ingots. Uh, so even if we just melt everything out and pour it out as blocks, we've still got ore doubling. Not fully automated, but uh, we will get that automated before too long. We'll see if it's this episode or not. It's not as big of a priority. It's just getting gear uh, at the moment. So if we don't have time for that, that's okay. All right, let's throw that in. As far as the pickaxe head goes... Um, Let's see, there's some cobalt right where I spawn in. What's that take to mine? Uh, iron can mine it now, so we'll go ahead and take this cobalt. Maybe we'll make our pickaxe head out of cobalt. And then maybe the rest out of rose gold. Cheap and easy. Okay, so we're going to take, put this in either the, the uh, tinker station or the anvil. Because uh, picks are basic. 
<clears throat> we could actually get rid of the tinker station now if we wanted to. Um, and we're going to throw that in there, and we're going to get our cobalt pickaxe. So not a lot of durability on this, only 480, but that's okay. Um, but you can see that we have five upgrade slots, one ability slot. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that, and we want to get... big thing that we want right now is just looting, or I mean luck. Uh, so the way luck net works now, instead of just pouring lapis into it, um, now you have tiers, so you have luck, luckier, and luckiest. Um, and each tier requires different things. Uh, so for luck, it's just two blocks of lapis, two copper ingots, and a cornflower. Cornflower. Do I? I don't think I have a cornflower. If you want to see a cool trick though for running fast with slime boots, if you, you know, if you don't have your sling, just run off an edge while sprinting, and just keep holding sprinting, and you'll get a pretty good speed going. As you can see. Oh, there's bamboo over here. Nice. Of course, if you ever run out of hunger, it'll stop. But I'm not actually seeing a cornflower here, but I do know where another, like, plains-type biome is. Uh, so I may check that out. Okay, so over here in Bremark, um, which is an area that I passed going to that ocean, um, over down in there is a plains. I could probably hit that up. And lo and behold, cornflowers. You see enough. Oh, whoops. Didn't think about that breaking all the things. So we got our very first tier of lucky. So we're going to throw in these. Uh, now, one thing to note with these new tools, there are upgrades and there are abilities. Um, there's a way to get a free ability, which is an ender dragon head. So you can get your second one that way. Um, and then upgrades, rose gold boost it. There's a few ways to get free upgrades. We'll talk probably about those today or at some point. A head, for example, gives you a free upgrade. All that's detailed in the books. Um, but upgrades are going to be stuff like haste or sharpness, things like that. And abilities are going to be stronger things um, like, for example, unbreakable or luck. Or um, I think turning your tool into a bucket for example, I think that's an ability, if I recall correctly. But if we put this on there, you can see that we no longer have an ability point, but we will have uh, luck. So we're going to have fortune one, basically. Um, now, to get luck, uh, luckier, uh, it's two ender pearls, two gold, and a golden carrot. I think we can pull that off. Though, to do it, it looks like I am going to have to go enderman hunting, because I'm one, uh, one fragment short, or one ender pearl short, uh, to pull that off, so... I think I'm about to break my third slime sling already. Oh, oh yes, Nebulous Heart. Which I can turn into three enderpearl. Perfect, perfect. That is actually like the best find I could have hoped for. Oh yeah, this is uh, like that. Okay, so now we can get luckier. And we can also get it on our, our uh, blade as well, since we got the Nebulous Heart. I know this is a good drop, but uh, I will happily break that down. We'll have plenty of those in due time uh, to where they're not going to be rare anymore, especially getting our lucky ist on our uh, on our sword will be quite useful. All right, so there's luckier, and then to get lucky ist, it is to oh, rabbit's foot. I can maybe hunt them in the desert. Uh, diamond name tag. Can I make these? Ooh, name tag might be a problem. It's always a rabbit hole, I swear. Okay, let me dump off some stuff real quick. Okay, so we need the two rose gold, the diamond, the name tag, and the rabbit's foot. So let's pop over to the desert. I think we can get all of those uh, in the desert itself. Hopefully the name tag, because there was uh, two desert temples over here. And we are going to go ahead and check those out, I think. One desert temple is right over here. All right, so let me just slip in there. And I do want the TNT from here. Um, we're actually gonna be using this for our blade. And I'll explain more about that here shortly. What do we got? We got emeralds, chelicra, bones, black lotus, common, I uh, don't really. Uh, well, we'll keep it. Uh, nuke virus, yeah. Even though 
These are kind of pointless on single player, but that's okay. I'm going to take everything, actually. Uh, I'm going to take everything. Uh, still no name tag. Okay, mana gem, mana regen potion. We'll take everything. Still no name tag. I do like coming across that. That's actually incredible to get at this point. Uh, I mean, they're not that expensive to craft, uh, but we will probably make use of that. Charm of Sinking. Boom. Our very first artifact. Let's throw that on. It's going to be over in this direction. Whoa. Oh, that's because the us. Because we can do that. <laughs> um, not really going to be great for oceans, actually. But uh, my main thinking is a swamp. It's going to be great in the swamp. Um, rivers and stuff, prob probably not as much. But swamp, it's going to be extremely useful because it's all shallow water. And the nice thing is water doesn't mess up my slime boots now. There it is. Oh, it's so good. Charm of Sinking, so good. Unless you're in the ocean and you can't breathe underwater. Then it's kind of bad, actually. <laughs> actually, but um, I think this is... Was this where... No, this wasn't where I fought those guys. But this is another desert temple, so we'll check this one out. Because there was one where I killed those two Endermen last episode, or whatever, and... That's what I was trying to find, but... Just go ahead and break that off. Alright, come on, name tag. Iron backpack, that's not bad. Uh, wild and Spike. We got a supply camp chest, which will come in handy. Oh, wow, we got a Sylph Shard from a chest. Junk, and wow, we still haven't got a name tag, seriously? And I really need two of these. Okay, yeah, I think that's the Desert Temple that I'm after. I gotta be honest, this uh, Charm of Sinking is like this really strange blessing. Like, I didn't expect it to be as good as it's proving itself to be, you know? Okay, come on, name tags. I need a couple of you. I got a saddle. Frost Aspect 5. Uh, Basalt Deltas. Uh... Drig me shard. Honestly, I didn't realize these uh, R's shards would show up in chests like this. Whoopee cushion, and we got tendrils. Knowledge of the edge is three. Source berry, carbuncle shards. Wow. Okay. Not a single name tag. Actually, there's a wandering trader. Does, does this one sell name tags by chance? I know sometimes they will. He does not. Of course he doesn't. And since we didn't get any luck in any of those desert temples, I think I'm just going to take this out and go mining. I mean, this is luckier. That should be fine, I think. Because um, we're still going to get quite a bit more Inferium. Um, so I'm going to take this out and go mining. We've got some pretty good durability on it. And uh, if we need to, we should be able to repair it pretty easily. Um, so I just want to get a little bit more Inferium so we can finish out our blade. Okay, I wanted to uh, pop you guys in because we actually have some diamonds right here. Uh, that give us five. And then right over there is more diamonds. Oh. Oh, it's skeleton. Okay. That is fine. Where are you at? Oh. <laughs> oh, if only I had my cleaver right now. That would be so wonderful. Uh, Cinnabar, we'll take it. And... I also want this coal because I'm almost out of torches. Let's see how many diamonds we get. We have 10. Got a little bit unlucky there. But that's fine. Oh yeah, I don't have to worry about water. It does still slightly push me, but uh, not very much. And I could still just kind of run through this. It makes it so much nicer, to be honest. Sorry, the water's going to be working against you. Oh, what is... Tortoise from Quark. I don't think... He doesn't seem like super... Oh, super aggressive or anything. So I'm going to leave him be. Because he's probably got defense off the wazoo, so... 
Oh, gosh. Oh, it's a dungeon. Oh. Okay. We can take this. And we may even have a name tag in here. I was thinking, well, I can just wait till we get into a bit of fishing to get a name tag, but... There we go. We got a saddle, some string, gunpowder, not that great of stuff. Um, I haven't ate mushroom stew yet, so this will be a good opportunity to just eat some mushroom stew. Okay, now we have a monster box over here. I'm going to let the mobs out. There we go. Yeah, there's a witch. Usually there's like some zombies, maybe a cave spider, a regular spider, and a witch, usually. And each one's going to drop some loot. And there's a name tag! Awesome! Nope. Just rush you down. Oh, a skeleton skull. Awesome. And we got Blessing. So I got the name tag for one of my things. I guess I'll put it on my pick. I will want another one for my sword. Uh, but that's not as big of a concern as getting it on our pick. Okay, well there's everything except for the rabbit's foot. Now we just have to go out and get the rabbit's foot. Uh, so the best place probably for that is going to be the desert. And we're up to five ingots of tyridium. It's taking a little bit longer than anticipated, but it's not too bad. It's letting me get out and mine some, which is good. Over here, normally, yeah, there's three right over here. This should be pretty quick. Deserts tend to be, like, the... That's a baby, ain't it? Uh, nope. Is that an adult rabbit's foot? So it only took us two kills. That's not too bad at all. And then we can get luckiest on our pick. So, there we go. We now have a luckiest pick. Great. So, while I'm here, I am going to go ahead and pour out an ingot of this cobalt just to repair our pick. Because it is down to, like, half durability at the moment. And then I'm going to go see about finding uh, a little bit more Inferium just to get our other three ingots. And we do have another monster box. Right here, so... Go ahead. Come on. Oh, we got extra cave spiders. Luckily, cave spiders don't have a lot of health. And I know name tags tend to be pretty common off of these, so these are actually pretty good. Haha, <laughs> name tag. And. You are dead. So we got the name tag that we're going to need for the blade now as well. I like those monster boxes. It's like the best source of name tags on this pack. Because uh, I was thinking, well, we could do fishing or librarian for the name tags. But if I can get them from monster boxes, I will take it. Yeah, and Luckiest, by the way, can produce a lot of Inferium. I've got three... And there's 56. So as you can see, it goes pretty quick. Once you have Fortune 3, you know. There we go. There's all the tyridium that we need. Okay, so we'll just pop over. We'll get this melted up. Oh, oh, oh. I can't resist you. Oh, no. This could be bad. Yeah. Oh, that was a, I didn't I didn't even see him to be perfectly honest. I just saw the Enderman. And I got excited. <sighs> no, <laughs> God, it's because I was down there mining with it dark, and uh... ah. <sighs> Man, this is a bad idea. I don't really have the, uh, oh, you keep your experience whenever you die. Interesting. It's actually really powerful. 
uh, let me just build this out slightly. Let's play it a little bit safer than I have been. Okay. That second death was my fault, really, because I shouldn't have been so gung-ho for that. All right. Well, I got my first couple deaths. Oh, and my helmet broke. I'm really starting to feel like I need refined storage. I just have stuff everywhere. And then for our large plate gold cows, this is, uh, what, four ingots now? Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking the rose gold, personally. Um, and my reasoning for that is that uh, that's going to be an extra modifier, which we'll make use of. Let me just go ahead, dump all that in there. I need to build this taller. Um, it is going to result in our sword not having a ton of durability because long term the damage and the durability actually aren't going to be important to us. Uh, but having those extra upgrade slots because I'm planning on making this thing really high severing. Uh, so I want a lot of upgrade slots. So I think this will be plenty. Uh, not to mention it's like well over double our current damage. So, Okay, and we're actually going to end out this episode here. We got our blade made. We got our smelter, our foundry. Uh, and we're going to pick back up next episode because I know it's about wrapping up point for this episode. Uh, so then next episode we'll come back. We'll get some modifiers. We're going to go ahead and do some automation with the foundry so that we can reliably use that for our ore doubling system or ore doubling Plus a little bit. It's a lot like the IC2 or doubling where you kind of have a little bit of byproducts. You know, Foundry works that way. So. so we'll get that all situated and set up next episode. And probably make a Silk Touch pick, I think, as well. Um, and maybe an axe, too. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. To stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.